Hi friends, Father Kerry Walters here, pastor of Holy Spirit American National Catholic Church, and this is another Holy Spirit moment, this one on Eddie Hilsum on radical gratitude. Hitler's Wehrmacht blitzkrieged the Netherlands in May of 1940, and in a mere four days overran the country. As you may well expect, the Jewish population of the Netherlands was subjected to persecution almost immediately. They were deprived of civil service and teaching jobs. They were uh, refused service at restaurants. They had to give up their bicycles. They could only be on the streets at certain hours of the day. Just a year later, after Dutch bishops had issued a strong statement condemning Hitler's anti-Semitism, the decision was made to make the Netherlands Judenfrei, Jew free, and a transit camp that was intended to house Dutch Jews until they could be sent east to Auschwitz and death was created. It is called Westerbork. And in that particular transit camp, trainload after trainload after trainload of Dutch, Jew, of, of Dutch Jews uh, left every Tuesday morning. Uh, of the tens of thousands of Jews who were deported from Westerbork, only about 5,000 ultimately returned. In 1943, shortly before the end of her young life, Eddie Hilsum, an inmate at the transit camp of Westerbork, wrote this. My life, she wrote, has become an uninterrupted dialogue with you, O God, one great dialogue. Sometimes when I stand in some corner of the camp, my feet planted on your earth, my eyes raised towards your heaven, sometimes tears run down my face, tears of deep emotion and gratitude. Isn't that an amazing passage? We can well imagine, can't we, tears of emotion and sorrow running down Eddie Hilsum's face, a 29-year-old woman who had been ripped away from her life by the Nazi invasion and who was facing imminent death, not only her own death, but the death of her entire family. But she says that they are tears of gratitude. Gratitude is the hallmark of Eddie Hilsum's last two or three years of life. She enables us to appreciate just how important gratitude is. And she reminds us that gratitude is possible in any situation, regardless of how dire it might seem. This awareness on Eddie's part was hard won. She was born in 1914 into a secular Jewish family. She eventually would have two brothers, both of whom unfortunately suffered from mental disease. Her parents, uh, never got along with one another. And so the family household was always, as she described it, chaotic. She once called it a madhouse. Her childhood then was fraught. When she finally was able to leave home and go to university, she threw herself into the life of the mind, the arts, and a bohemian kind of existence. She took any number of lovers as she studied law and threw herself into Slavic and Russian literature. Her mother, by the way, was Russian. She loved Dostoevsky and she dreamed of becoming a great writer herself. And then the Nazi invasion occurred. And her life, like the lives of everyone in the Netherlands, but especially the Jews, was turned upside down. She felt herself adrift. However, she met a man in 1941 an expatriate from Germany named Julius Spia, and she would write of him, this is the man who actually birthed me. This is the man who became my spiritual father. Speer was a psychotherapist. He was an adherent of the Jungian school of psychology, which of course, as you know, is heavily uh, uh, concentrated upon archetypal uh, knowledge. And under his tutelage, she began to sort out the chaos in her own life. And she managed to touch 
space with what the monk Thomas Merton a few decades later would call the true self. That quiet, silent space within, which serves as a womb for our creativity and our appreciation of the world, and which can also be the meeting place between ourselves and God. She actually began to call that true self God. But after a while, the conviction grew upon her that God transcended her, that God shouldn't be identified with this silent space within, but rather that the silent space within was an avenue toward God. And when that realization hit this previously completely secular bohemian young woman, she tells us she was forced to her knees in what was surely a surprising turn of events for her and actually for those who knew her as well. And at that point, her life began to change. She noticed the ordinary things of life shimmering with beauty and truth and goodness. She recognized that the shimmer came from the transcendent source of everything that is, namely God. She began to dedicate herself to helping others because she saw the same light shimmering through them. And immense waves of gratitude washed over her until they became her normal state. She lived, as it were, gratitude more than merely experiencing gratitude. And even when she and her entire family were sent to Westerbork, she managed to continue being gratitude in this profound, radical way. Oh, she wasn't a Pollyanna. She wasn't naively optimistic. She knew perfectly well what was happening to her and her people. She knew perfectly well how it would all end. But she nonetheless was so grateful for every moment given her. She writes once in her diaries that she kept during these final years of seeing a flower breaking through the concrete in this otherwise gray and dismal Westerbork camp and being filled with a sense of gratitude and delight. Let me read you another excerpt from her diaries of this time. It all comes down to the same thing, she writes. Life is beautiful and I believe in God. And I want to be there right in the thick of what people call horror and still be able to say, life is beautiful. Despite everything, I rejoice and exult time and again, O oh God. I am grateful to you for having given me this life, this life, this life that included Westerbork. This life, with all of its pain and suffering, was still something Eddie decided that deserved intense, radical, profound gratitude. She, her parents, and her two brothers were finally put on one of the transit trains to Auschwitz in 1943, and all of them perished. As she was being loaded into the train, she managed to scribble a postcard greeting and to push it through the cracks in the car. Someone found it later. And in that particular postcard, Eddie wrote, we left the camp singing. We left the camp singing. How do you and I cultivate this kind of deep, deep, profound gratitude to life? Chances are very good that no one listening to me right now will ever experience the horror of a, of a death camp, will ever experience the suffering that Eddie endured in her short life. And yet we may be going through life our comfortable lives without the deep sense of gratitude that she managed to acquire. So how can we acquire this kind of gratitude, this realization that everything is a shimmer with God? Well, I think that there are at least three steps to doing so. The first is this. We need to cultivate what the 14th century anonymous author of The Cloud of Unknowing, that wonderful mystical text, calls an alert attentiveness. 
we need to break out of the myopic way in which we respond to reality. We need to go beneath the surface. We need to wipe the grime from our eyes, the busyness that can blind us, the desire for immediate gratification that can cloud our vision, the self-absorption that gets in the way of us seeing the world clearly. We need to somehow take off spectacles that distort our relationship with reality and see it for what it is. And the way in which we do that is to slow down, to engage in prayerful contemplation, and to open ourselves to that which is. As the Buddhist would say, we need to become transparent panes of glass through which reality can shine in an un unimpeded way. That's the first step. And the second step is this, appreciation. Once our vision becomes unclouded and we can see the shimmering effect of God in reality, we begin to notice beauty and truth and goodness, just as Eddie Hilsum did, that earlier may have evaded us, may have escaped us in our busy life, in our myopic existences. And when that happens, we cannot but help to appreciate fully and thankfully that which we encounter. But here's the thing about gratitude. We too often think of gratitude as a spontaneous kind of experience, don't we? But it's not. It, gratitude as a way of being rather than a quick here and gone again emotion can be cultivated. Gratitude and constant openness and thankfulness to the beauty of everything that is, to the presence of God in the world, is a discipline. None other than Henry Nouwen, the Dutch American priest and spiritual writer, tells us that we can cultivate gratitude, a constant state of gratitude, with a little bit of discipline. Here's what Nouwen has to say. The discipline of gratitude is the explicit effort to acknowledge that all that I am and have is given to me as a gift of love, a gift to be celebrated with joy. Gratitude as a discipline involves a conscious choice. I can choose to be grateful even when my emotions and feelings are still steeped in hurt and resentment. It is amazing how many occasions present themselves in which I can choose gratitude instead of a complaint. I can choose to be grateful when I'm criticized, even when my heart still responds in bitterness. I can choose to speak about goodness and beauty, even when my inner eye still looks for someone to accuse or something to call ugly. I can choose to listen to the voices that forgive and to look at the faces that smile, even while I still hear words of revenge and see grimaces of hatred. We discipline ourselves to profound, radical gratitude, the kind of gratitude that Eddie Hilsom models for us. When we recognize that everything, as Henry Nouwen says, is gift. And when we recognize that, how can we not be suffused with gratitude? And when we become suffused with gratitude, what a change in our life that will bring about. We will look at the world not with naive, Pollyanna-ish, innocently optimistic eyes. No, we will recognize that there is suffering and there is evil in the world, but we will always see that behind and beyond all of the dark places in our world is the shimmer of God, and that is sheer grace. So I thank God for Eddie Hilsum and for her witness and for her showing us that even in the midst of despair and misery, we can still be grateful for the gift of life, for the gift of beauty, truth, and goodness, for the gift of God. My friends, I really do encourage you, if you're not familiar with Eddie Hilsum, to take a look at her diaries. You will be blessed, I promise you. 
I'm Father Kerry Walters, and this has been another Holy Spirit moment. I'm grateful for and to you. If you are of a mind, I invite you to subscribe to Holy Spirit Moments. Thank you. God bless. I'll see you next time.